on to capital projects. <clears throat> and again, these are the ones, these are our major renovation projects that we are asking to um, issue bonds for and we'll pay, it, pay the cost of the project over time. So we submitted these requests. The, the requests get packaged into what's called a certificate of necessity request. That's what the CN stands for. Um, those get submitted in the fall and <clears throat> we submitted the same uh, projects last year and we were denied. This year the state decided to approve the projects and agree with us that we, we needed these um, projects done. So they have set aside over $70 million of capital funding that the state will provide for these projects. That's 60% of the value of the projects. The catch is that colonial taxpayers have to agree to pay the remaining 40%, which is just under $50 million. If we do not, um, if the colonial community decides not to approve this request, the state will reallocate that $70 million somewhere else. We do not get to keep it. We don't get to do 60% of our projects. Um, it gets reallocated to other districts, other state agencies, wherever there's other need. Um, so the colonial portion is critical to getting that $70 million to actually land here in Colonial and benefit our schools and our kids. So again, this, <clears throat> this is an overview, overview from last time or last month, but it's important again to, to point out that our schools are on average 60 years old. Anybody who owns a home knows that over time you have to put money into it. You have to put roof, a roof in, you have to replace your air conditioner. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of the stuff in our, um, around our district is at the point where it simply needs replacement. It is not a reflection of um, poor management or poor maintenance or you know, anything other than simply age. Time marches on and we need to upgrade and invest in our buildings. So we wanted to zero in tonight on the projects here at William Penn. And the overall project um, total that we have is, again, that $121 million. 67.8 million of that is slated for William Penn. And I know that athletic fields, the, the new athletic complex is what gets talked about most often. I know I'm, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh my gosh, almost $70 million for new athletic fields. That's crazy. That seems, that seems really outrageous. So let's dive into the details. Not all of that 67 million, 68 <clears throat> million is slated for the athletic complex, okay? We've got 1.2 million for security enhancements. We've got um, five and a half million for uh, basically redoing the parking lot and, and the sidewalks around the building. <clears throat> Replacing the roof on this building is gonna cost us $10.5 million. And the athletic facilities do cost about 50 million. How that breaks down in terms of the components of, the, um, of what we're getting for that. The field house that is <clears throat> um, a companion to the, the stadium costs about 25 million to construct or it's budgeted to cost that. The stadium and fields around, <clears throat> including the bleachers and, and press box and so forth, add another 13. Um, constructing the track that will go around the field is another two. Under the current proposal, um, the tennis courts would be relocated to where Bill Cole Stadium is currently, um, and that will cost about 1.5 million to get those under get those constructed. We are also rehabbing our baseball and softball fields, new dugouts, um, regraded fields, new bleachers, and then <clears throat> um, a lot of stormwater management and kind of the miscellaneous site work that goes along with all these major projects costs about another six million. So for folks who have not been around and walked around the campus and seen the state of our facilities today, we wanted to include a little some visual visual evidence here. The Bill Cole Stadium picture is a little bit hard to see, but um, you can see that it's boxed in, right? The top left, that red band, that's the track. 
It doesn't go around the field, but it's adjacent to the field. The baseball field is what's on the right. That, uh, the tan little semicircle there is one of our baseball fields. And then this conglomeration of buildings here is our greenhouse space and, and where our ag program has some, um, some structures. Our, our beehives are there, our goat pens, um, a lot of the <clears throat> agricultural aspects that William Penn offers are right in that area. These big white things are bleachers. And then we've got some maintenance buildings here. Um, tennis courts, they're not in great shape. They are, frankly, they're unplayable. Um, and then, I'm not sure, I think this picture might be from earlier today, um, but this, this is what our football field looks like when it rains. It gets flooded, there's a lot of puddling, and becomes a big mess. When you go in a, when you're a William Penn athlete and you have an away game, this is what you see. This is what you play on. This is what our kids see when they're going away from, you know, an away game. <clears throat> These are fairly recent. I know Odessa, I think, just opened within the last two years. St. George's is a little bit older. I think it's within the last 10, five to 10. Um, <clears throat> but again, you can see, you know, multi-sport fields, track around them, turf fields. And the charters and private schools are, are not left out of the mix either. Um, this <clears throat> on the left is Abyssinia Stadium up in Wilmington for Silesianum. And Newark Charter just opened um, a nice new stadium for its school uh, this, this year. So this is the standard now. This is kind of, uh, this is just what comes with building a new high school or, you know, <clears throat> um, Standard athletic complex for high school. This is what we're, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> so a little bit more context around, um, around just some of the numbers in general. Um, <clears throat> if we were to go to the state today and say we want to build a high school the same size as William Penn. They have a formula that they, <clears throat> that they do to determine what, how to budget uh, to plan for these construction projects. This building would be budgeted to cost almost $180 million to build today. Because I know, you know, $50 million sounds like a ton of money. But when you compare it to how much it's costing to build schools in today's environment, you start to level out and see that it's it's not out it's not unreasonable given some of the other costs that we've seen and i will i will tell you that in the most recent few years almost all of the schools that have been funded have gone over budget and the districts have come back and said hey that formula that you use to determine what we need to what we're going to spend it's too low so that 178 is arguably too low based on what um, the recent experiences in actually putting, you know, building a school. So just context for where that $50 million number sits in kind of the, the grand scheme of school construction in today's environment. The other thing, and I've touched on this a little bit, but <clears throat> most of the facilities here at Penn, we have, we have maintained them and loved them and cared for them as much as we possibly can. And, and the only thing to do at this point is to completely replace them and overhaul the facility. Um, I won't flip back to the picture, but I took the time to point out all of the things around Bill Cole Stadium. There is no way to expand the footprint of that stadium without having to move all of those things and reconfigure all of those things. And all of that would come with, with cost and, and, you know, site work and <clears throat> reconfiguration. Um, to build a football stadium in the spot where it is, we wouldn't have the multi-sport usage. You know, there, there's a lot of factors that we'd lose if we just kind of put a new stadium in the same location and, and chose not to expand. <clears throat> and additionally, we probably couldn't build the stadium as it is now, brand new, because it may not be ADA compliant and it may not be Title IX compliant. Um, based on today's environment. 
So what are the benefits? I'm not, I'm not gonna read through every bullet point here. Um, but the, the benefits are that, you know, a, a turf field, the maintenance is a lot easier. The turnover time in terms of how quickly it can be uh, transitioned from one sport to another is a lot quicker. Um, there are multiple benefits that, um, that will, you know, the entire community will, will see the benefit of. Um, additionally, not just for sports, but our, our band, our color guard, our drum line, they will have better practice facilities. Um, you know, when they go to tournaments and things, they are probably not walking on grass and, and walking on a field that's in the condition that our, our field is in, or our parking lot, which is where they practice a lot of the times. So they'll be able to practice on a field that is much closer to where they would be competing. Um, and then there's other, you know, a lot of other uses that we could um, add back into the complement of things that we can do here at Penn that currently we just don't have the space for and the facilities are just not built to accommodate um, a, lot of, a lot of the things going on, um, including a lot of the community uses. Um, you know, <clears throat> because of the temperamental nature of our, of our grass fields, we have to manage and mitigate how many community groups are using our fields, when they can use them, et cetera. With the turf field, it'll be a lot easier to, to get other community groups to access to use our, our facilities um, and be able to benefit from, from them in that way. So it's time. And this, you know, this is our, this is our tagline for this uh, referendum. We know our kids deserve this. You've seen what they walk into when they go to other facilities. Um, <clears throat> our staff deserve it. We have staff that are so dedicated and are doing you know, great things for kids every day. And we know that you as a community deserve this uh, because the, <clears throat> the investing in education is you know, the best way that a community can tell, tell its kids that it cares. And, so we, we know that Colonial Nation deserves it, and we do hope we will have your support in, the, uh, in February 